Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the weather warnings as we do have some yellow warnings issued over the next couple of days as we are going to see plenty of heavy rainfall in the west. We'll have a look at the latest UK view, looking at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. As we are going to see some warmer air masses waft up from the south through this weekend to the start of next week. But unfortunately, it's not going to give widely uh, great conditions like we thought a few days ago. Instead, it could get locally warmer and drier weather, but is going to fuel precipitation further westwards. And the general outlook, as we'll see in the longer range from the GFS, GM, ESMWF and the ensembles, is for a very unsettled spell as we end September and start October. Temperatures will be up and down, so there will be some warmer days, and it will coincide with some drier periods, definitely in the east and the south. But further westwards, it's more likely to be cool and very unsettled as well. Even the latest GFS run, which is just rolling out at the moment, does produce a very intense storm in the next 10 days uh, with wind gusts well over 100 miles per hour. It is courtesy of an ex-hurricane, but nevertheless, a really intense system moving in from the latest GFS. Luckily, the other runs aren't on board with it, but it'll be interesting to see how it does develop uh, and what is in store for the longer range. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link is in the description. As you can see from the live radar, you can see we've got another day of sunshine and showers. Showers not quite as heavy as they were yesterday. We did see a few thunderstorms developing, especially in around the London area. I heard lots of reports of lightning. And I even saw some significant lightning where I was, uh, and there were reports of hail as well. Showers still extensive today. A couple of them, you can see some reds developing, could be some isolated lightning, but most of these are more moderate in intensity, at the moment at least. If you run back earlier in the afternoon, you can see a few of them were quite intense indeed. But at the moment, they're slowly losing their intensity as they do progress towards uh, from the west towards the east and they are developing in lines and places and again most significant further northwards and westwards uh, but they will slowly die out through the rest of this evening now temperatures today haven't been particularly great i mean they're not horrible uh, but you can see no oranges at all more yellows and blues so more autumnal mid to low teens further north and westwards and if you're lucky to be further south and eastwards well you might have just about avoided the showers for the most uh, most part of the day then temperatures may be climbing to 17 or 18. Now, if you look at the weather warnings, we've got a warning for Sunday for parts of Scotland here, uh, for southern Scotland, extending to parts of the Highlands, all the way into parts of eastern Scotland. Got a weird shaped warning here, but really over the higher ground, pretty much for the whole of Sunday. Persistent heavy rain expected through Sunday, leading to flooded roads and small charts of property flooding. High impact, low likelihood. Again, 50 millimetres, 30 to 50 millimetres quite widely. 80 to 100 millimetres over the course of 24 to 36 hours, and there could be some very strong winds uh, as well. So quite a lively system moving in on Sunday, and quite an early warning for this system. Of course, we'll update this again tomorrow, so I'll have a look at it in more detail when we've got more runs available. So if you go through the latest UKV, we'll be able to see what's going to happen in the next few days. You can see the showers through this afternoon continue to spread in, but they should slowly die out through this evening, and really yeah, peter away. As we head into tomorrow, it's going to be a drier today tomorrow, quite widely, as we're going to see a brief area of high pressure, which actually might be pretty pleasant. But we have got the next low pressure moving in. It is a brief ridge that's going to give us dry weather tomorrow. As I said at the start of the video, it's not a complete washout in the next couple of weeks. There will be drier days like this where temperatures will get to maybe 19 or 20 degrees, but they're going to be few and far between. The weather system out to our west is going to slowly move in, and then it starts to get very heavy rain through parts of Scotland and northern England. This is why we've got that weather warning issued for Scotland with this significant um, area of low pressure moving in, just pushing moisture towards the hills, giving a lot of rainfall. As I said, further north and westwards, going to see more rain further south as eastward you are it won't be too bad so for parts of the south and the east saturday looks pretty dry day sunday perhaps a bit more cloudy but cloud looked like it could break during the afternoon and it could be a fairly decent weekend in a few spots but as i said northwards and westwards it is a washout weekend eventually that weather front moves through but it does weaken significantly as it does so maybe just give some dribs and drabs further eastwards then as we get into monday another day of showers in the west drier in the south and the east so Three consecutive days of fairly dry weather in the east, but if you're in the north and the west, 
you'll be talking about what dry weather because it's going to be pretty horrible indeed. As we progress through Monday into Tuesday, we're going to see more rainfall moving from the west, and then we can see some more widespread showers through Tuesday uh, as that does progress. And then another weather system that's going to probably give widespread rain for all areas as we head into Wednesday. So unsettled conditions overall, but the south and east could just have a little bit of a respite over the next couple of days uh, as we do see a brief ridge of high pressure building just about hold on with perhaps some warmer weather as well. But as we saw, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Proper of Ireland, parts of Wales into Northern and Western England will be pretty horrible through much of Sunday into Monday. If we look at the temperatures this afternoon, 16, 17 in London, but much cooler further north and westwards, low teens, if not touching only 9 or 10 degrees. Tomorrow, we could see again 17, 18 in England, where we do see temperatures rising in a bit more sunshine, further north and westwards, 8 to 10 degrees. Sunday, warmer widely, even for areas under the heavy rain, it'd be 15, 16 degrees, and that's because it's a warm sector pushing in, and could see a 20 degree across parts of East Anglia. Finally into Monday, you could see a 21 or 22. It's actually pretty quite a pleasant day there as we do see a warm sector push in under some brief higher pressure. And then as we slowly head into Tuesday, temperatures still moderately high in the southeast, 2021, but slowly reducing. And those temperatures will fall as the next weather system moves in. So you can see it's going to be fairly unsettled the next five days, but not complete washout. The south and east might actually be fairly decent and fairly warm. Uh, it's going to be sort of a... Uh, it's going to be... Um, country's going to kind of be split in two halves. North and west, very unsettled, horrible, rainy, windy and cold. South and eastwards, warm at times and generally drier. But as we see in the longer range, the GFS is producing something really quite remarkable as we head towards day 10 with a very deep area of low pressure. Now you can see high pressure building over the next couple of days, but by Sunday we see that conveyor belt of moisture coming up from the south and the west, giving all that rainfall in Scotland, northern England and northern Ireland. Further south and eastwards, just under the higher pressure and might hold on all the way to about Wednesday time, when eventually low pressure will move through. Now, this is where we start to see something interesting happening. As we head towards day 10, we stay very unsettled. But you see this ex-tropical system moving in from the southwest. Now, this will slowly join with the jet stream and develop into an extremely significant area of low pressure as it passes by the UK. We're looking here at 950 or 948 millibars and even as it develops more significantly towards parts of Scotland we're seeing 940 millibars towards the centre of this low that is ridiculous uh, and you can see here we'll have a look at the wind gusts in a bit more detail in a minute but you can see here getting up towards 180 kilometres per hour towards the centre of that so that is ridiculous wind speeds for an area of low pressure near the UK now, if we do go beyond that, you see it does move quickly beyond to our north and we go into a more of a flat westerly then. And even a bit of high pressure built into our east, but very unsettled there with that X hurricane coming in off the Atlantic. Now, if you look at the wind gusts, we'll be able to see there are some extropical systems out in the Atlantic over the coming days, but they don't really impact us too much. But as we do progress into the longer term, you can see there's quite a big storm system next Wednesday that moves in. Quite a windy day there. But you can see it's sort of yellows and darker colours here, indicating max winds of maybe 100 kilometres per hour wind gusts, that is. So 60, maybe 70 mile per hour wind gusts at the worst. However, as we do progress beyond that into the period after that, we do start to see that really significant low move in by that day 10 period. And the wind gusts getting up to maybe as high as 200 kilometers per hour towards the center of that low or around the southern edge of that low. Uh, and that is looking at over 100 miles per hour, 120, 130 mile per hour gusts. That is ridiculous. Uh, and the 10 meter wind speeds are going to be ridiculously high as well. Again, we're looking at 100 uh, kilometers per hour sustained winds, so maybe 60 or 70 mile per hour sustained winds here so extremely strong area of low pressure but as we from the gm and the gfs in a minute they aren't producing anything anywhere near as severe if you look at the gm uh, now over the next 10 days we can see the continued low pressure moving in from the west but we are going to see uh we are going to see continued uh, high pressure perhaps just about nudging for the south east low pressure will continue to push in off the atlantic as we head into the longer term and as we head towards day 10 you can see that x tropical system 
coming out into the Atlantic. But it's nowhere near as strong yet and hasn't combined with the jet. So there's the possibility it could turn into a really quite severe system around day 10. But it's much less progressive than the GFS was at this point, and it isn't producing anything yet. But the risk is there, just not showing it in the day 10 time frame like the GFS was. Now, if you compare to the ECWF, it's very similar. Low pressure continued to dominate from the west, but high pressure just about holding on in the south and the east. And then eventually, as we head towards day 10, we do see quite a severe low push in, but it stays more out in the Atlantic, just bringing areas of rain for us. And you can see that that next hurricane or current hurricane, when it, whatever it is out in the North Atlantic by this point, doesn't exist on the east of the WF. So the GFS has this insanely um, deep area of low pressure moving in, a historic system it would be if it got down to 940 millibars with wind gusts well over 100 miles per hour, maybe getting it to 120, 130 miles per hour, it would be historic. Red warnings issue, all that sort of stuff. The east of the WF doesn't even produce it. Just showing you the uncertainty we do have at this time frame and with this sort of pattern in general. Whenever we get to this time of year when we've got all those systems out in the Caribbean, in the mid-Atlantic, getting thrown out away in the longer term, the moles do struggle to deal with it. Now, if you finally look at the ensembles, you can see the very unsettled outlook in the next couple of weeks. Now, this is London, and as I said, South and East is always going to escape the worst conditions, at least in the short term, because he's not particularly high amounts of precipitation in the next five days, for it does spike quite a lot higher in the longer term, and you see up and down precipitation quite a bit. Two meter temperatures are slowly on a downwards trend, could slightly peak as we head through Sunday, Monday, maybe 21, 22, but then looking more at the mid-teens in the longer term, and the sea level pressure is kind of up and down, uh, not uh, sustained high, not sustained low either, and that's because we're going to be seeing oscillating pattern. Now, if you do compare to Glasgow, uh, you'll be able to see Look at the precipitation, it's absolutely horrible over the next couple of weeks. Huge amounts of rainfall. The sea level pressure is pretty low as well, down to sort of 1,000 millibars or so. Remember, we're not seeing any direct lows impacting us in the next couple of days, but we're going to see lots of weather fronts associated with lows sticking out in the Atlantic. And finally, the east MWF for Glasgow, huge amounts of rainfall, very unsettled as well. Pretty much around average though for temperature, so it shouldn't be too horrible for those temperatures but under the rain it's never going to feel particularly great and then for london you can see again precipitate uh, temperatures are all over the place but a little bit of a cluster of warmer conditions over the next few days precipitation fairly high as we progress from the end of september to early october but the next sort of four or five days it doesn't doesn't look too bad at all so it'll be very interesting to see what happens as we end september and start october it's looking like it's going to be very unsettled that looks bang on but will we see one of these real big x tropical systems that kept, keeps getting thrown our way? The models keep trying to produce something significant and then it kind of backs off and it comes back. We will just have to see. But another extremely ridiculous GFS run today. We've seen a number of them over the past few weeks. And we'll probably see a number more of them over the next few weeks as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.